Hi, my name is Akitunde Oyebodi, and I'm an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Akintunde is a trained economist passionate about sustainable development, sustainable finance, and youth unemployment. He began his career as a research assistant at the Lagos Business School and spent over a decade in various banking roles with First City Monument Bank FCMB and Stanbic IBTC Bank. Akin is the pioneer executive secretary of the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, LSETF, established to provide financial support to residents of Lagos State for job and wealth creation and to tackle unemployment. All right, welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Akin. Thank you very much. All right, Aki, um, you attended um, the University of Lagos, uh, where you bagged your degree in economics. Uh, please do share about growing up in Lagos and what were those series of events that led to you, you know, studying economics? That's a very interesting question. Uh, I started out studying chemical engineering, um, mm. which you know about, of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, so I, but I realized very quickly I didn't want to be an engineer and I didn't know what to do about it mm. until I believe it was Anderson Consulting. Uh, came to do a career fair or career talk at the university. And I believe it was Dutton Suleiman, who was the country partner or someone at the time, who actually just said, you know, what we look for at Anderson, we're just looking for smart people. We don't care if it's Yoruba, you study English. Like. So I said to myself, you know, I really don't need to be an engineer because I wanted to be an engineer because I wanted people to think I was smart, <laughs> right? Not because I liked it. I didn't like, like thermodynamics. I didn't like those things, you know. <laughs> And process engineering. No, process engineering. I didn't like it at all. I didn't want to be in a laboratory. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to do anything. No chemistry, nothing, you know? And so I said to myself, look, hey, you know, let me go do something that's more neutral. So I went and uh, I, I, I changed track and studied economics. Now, it cost me some time. I lost some time. So it was a risk. But I enjoyed every moment of it. And, you know, I said to myself, now, I use what I've learned in economics in my everyday life. At every point in time, you're likely to catch me reading an economics uh, book of some sort. You know, some of my favorite writers today are economists. We don't have any trace of you doing a master's degree, did you? Nope. Okay, so you possibly went on straight to the Lagos Business School where you became a research assistant. Why did you make that choice? I think it was very interesting because I think, one, it was the quality of people I, I was going to work with. So I was drawn to that role particularly because of a gentleman uh, called Albert Alos. Mm -hmm. So Professor Alos was the dean, uh, was the dean of the Lagos Business School at the time, okay. and it was someone I thought I could learn a lot from. Um, and to me, I mean, working for Prof, I felt was better than any degree program anywhere. Amazing, because subsequently, I mean, you moved to First City Monument Bank, Correct. where you went on to lead the research team there. Correct. Please do tell me about your time there. FCMB gave me a pretty well-rounded view of the world, you know did some work for Treasury, did some work for capital markets, did some work for the CEO, um, did some work in strategy. So it was, a great, it was a great period. I mean, if you had told me when I walked in there that I'd have spent the next six years or so um, in, at First City Money Bank, I'd have said you were kidding. But, mm -hmm. but I enjoyed every, every, every moment of it. Okay, beautiful. So you spent about six years there Correct. and subsequently moved to Stambik IBTC. Correct. Where your roles and your job description sort of changed um, what informed that shift? So, you know, I'm a firm believer in taking risk. Mm -hmm. um, and my, I mean, my career trajectory has been, I've taken quite some risk, mm -hmm. right? So the first risk was switching, switching degree programs, right? Mm -hmm. um, the second one was deciding not to go to do a master's program when that was, when that was fashionable, was right? Fashionable. When everyone was going to school some, mm -hmm. at some place, right? Mm -hmm. um, the third one was I switched organizations and switched roles. Typically, you either switch roles within the same organization uh -huh. or you just switch organizations into similar same. roles. Mm -hmm. But I felt, look, it was, it was an incredible opportunity. At FCMB, I'd done different things, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd done some work on capital raising. I'd done some work on research. I had sat even in the brand marketing team oh, you nice. know, at some point. Mm -hmm. So when I went to Stambik, um, it was an interesting time and it was a great time to, to go into retail banking. Mm -hmm. And I felt at that time, that first, 
Nigeria as a retail, as a retail economy was just expanding. And I thought going to Stambik IBTC was great because it then gave me the benefit of working for an institution that had a broader view of the region at the very least and of the globe. So that, that was what informed that decision. Okay, amazing. So today, you're the Executive Secretary at Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. Um, how would you say your experience in banking prepared you for this role? I mean, I think of all the risks I've taken, people think that this, was, this is the... This is the biggest risk I've taken. I actually think that in terms of risk taking, this was the least risky um, shift for me. And how so? Because I was coming to do something I had done in the private sector for a, for a while. I, I had run SME banking for Stambik IBTC across Nigeria for four and a half years. Um, and in that role, I had significant exposure to even SME banking across the continent. Uh, so it wasn't something that was new to me. Uh, supporting small businesses was my life. Akin's key focus at the LSETF is on promoting entrepreneurship by improving access to finance, strengthening the institutional capacity of micro, small and medium enterprises, and formulating policies designed to improve the business environment in Lagos State. Well, I'm sure there's somebody watching now thinking, OK, uh, I can access funds here. Who, firstly, is eligible to access the funds? How do they access the funds? And is it a loan or a grant? First, I mean, the easiest one to answer is the last one. It's a loan, <laughs> it's not a grant. OK. Um, we have a bunch of different programs, right? Okay. So the program we run today is an MSME loan program. Um, and we have three variants of that program. Hmm. The first one is where if you run a business, incorporated the business, run for at least 12 months, you've got bank statements, etc. Uh, you can come apply for a loan of up to 5 million naira, mm -hmm. interest rate of 5% per annum over a three-year period. Okay. Um, you pay back over a three-year period. The second one is where you run the business, but you haven't incorporated the business. So you are okay. ERC running your ERC <laughs> cafeteria without necessarily registering. Mm -hmm. For that, you can take a loan of up to 500,000 mm -hmm. for one year. Again, same interest rate of 5% per annum. Now, if you're a young person or not so young person, who's just starting out in business, has been trained, either done some functional training on what you want to do or general entrepreneurship training, okay. will offer a loan of up to 250000 for a year, again, at 5% per annum. To qualify, you must be a resident. You must be resident in Lagos State. That's mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. um, you must have a last track card. So Lagos State re Resident Registration uh, Agency. You must have a last track card. You can do that in any local government. Okay. Um, you must either be tax compliant or have registered to pay taxes. So if you're a startup, we know you haven't paid any taxes, but you must have gone to do your registration mm -hmm. to show. Because the money we are lending, the money, the, the funding we are providing is from the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. So it's important that you pay taxes, or you, at least you've shown intent to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, other, other than that, you can go to our website, fill out the application form online, mm -hmm. and submit. Or go to our liaison offices. We have liaison offices in the 20 original local governments, mm -hmm. where you can pick up an application form and submit there. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, beautiful. So I'd like to know, um, you've been running for how long now, please? Uh, so the, the fund was inaugurated in March of 2016. Beautiful. But we started writing out our loans. The, the application process opened November of 2016. Okay, beautiful. So how much of the 25 billion has been disbursed so far? We've approved loans of approximately 4.9 billion, mm -hmm. um, but we've disbursed now 4.2 billion. Amazing. So you recently signed a deal with the UNDP, a $4 million deal. Correct. What are the details of that deal and how does it impact on the project? Uh, so that's a different program. Okay. Right. So like I said, we have a bunch of programs. So this, the, 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 the uh, deal with UNDP hmm. is actually to improve technical and vocational outcomes um, in Lagos State. So with that, we're, we're planning to train anywhere between eight to 15,000 people. Um, across five key sectors. It's manufacturing, construction, healthcare, hospitality, and entertainment. Wow. Um, and the idea is to train those people, but also place them in, in jobs within the next 18 months. Okay, amazing. I'm sure one of the challenges, uh, you've had numerous challenges, but I did read of one. Um, three people impersonating uh, LSETF officials. How do you, I mean, stop that kind of situation from recurring? We never get tired. Um, first, we have a whistleblower framework. So if you go to our website, um, there's a phone number there, there's an email address where you can pretty much blow a whistle. 
Um, so if someone has asked you to bring money to fill out an application form, or that they'll charge a processing fee, <laughs> as, I, as I've heard, you know, please, by all means, just go report out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're constantly monitoring. You know, we're doing mis you know, we're, we actually even send people in to these places. So those people were apprehended. We got people to, you know, pretend like they were applicants, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how we found those out. So we're constantly, you know, scanning the environment. Because, we you know, and we keep telling people, we keep reinforcing it, that the application is free. Please do not pay money to anyone. And we keep saying it, and we won't stop saying it. Okay, beautiful. You said earlier this year that 23,000 businesses will be touched by LSETF in 2017. To date, how many businesses have been touched? I mean, directly, we've approved loans for 6,500. Hmm. Um, indirectly, multiples of that. Hmm. However, one of the things that we've realized is that, first, the challenge of unemployment um, and access to finance is significant. Much bigger than we even thought when we set out on this journey. And the needs of the people are significantly more than you know, um, the funding needs we even initially ex uh, expected. So it's important that you are able to support businesses um, to, the, to, the, to the fullness of their needs. So what we are doing today, we started out with 6,500. We'll ramp up those numbers fairly quickly. Um, and I expect that by next year, you know, you'll be able to see the full value of, of the work we're doing. But, but the early signs are very good okay. in terms of the job creation numbers. You um, said you were a bit reluctant to take uh, the job initially, but is there anything, anything within this um, firm that still keeps you up at night? Oh yeah, you guess, I mean, there are many things. I think the day, the day some, nothing keeps me up at night <laughs> means that, you know, um, it's time to do something else. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing that keeps me up at night is how do you take people off the streets? How do you put people to work? Um, are we doing this as best as we could? Because every mistake we make, there's someone who's going to suffer out there for it. In a, in a country where we have an on, on and underemployment rate combined of 35%, mm. you know, if you are saddled with the task of supporting what is the biggest city in Africa's um, job creation agenda, you've got, to be, you've got to be up at night. You know, you've got to always think, what can we do differently? How can we do this better? Um, how can we improve on the selection of the people? How can we ensure that merit trumps all? You know, how can we ensure that the system is not, is not broken, mm -hmm. that people are not compromising the system? All right, as head of this organization, in terms of measurable and tangible you know, metrics, what will success mean to you? Success? Oh, that's an interesting question. I guess primarily it's something close to full employment in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, it's putting people to work. Mm -hmm. It's ensuring that we've grown the next generation of businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, it's ensuring that there are people, there are thousands of success stories mm -hmm. who can come back to say, Lagos State Employment Trust Fund supported me at a critical time in my business. And because of that, this is where I've gotten my business to. All right, so this gentleman online said, uh, you're a creative and original thinker. You also went further to say you're, you're, you've got native intelligence. Uh, would you agree with him? I mean, native intelligence, you know, that's it. Well, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's his view. Um, so I don't know if, if I'll describe myself in those words. I think those are, I mean, whoever he is, are very kind and uh, generous comments. But I mean, I think that we've got to realize that, you know, I always say to solve the kind of problems we have here, you know, we've got to think about it differently. You know, this country hasn't achieved anywhere close to its potentials in over 50 years. Mm. So it's because we've been doing something wrong. So if we continue doing what's been done before, we're not going to get different results. So I guess for me, the first thing I always look at is, how can we think about this thing better? Even something that works, mm. how do we improve on it? Kofi Annan, um, formerly of the United Nations, is, list, is one of the people you follow um, closely. Uh, what makes him, you know, one to watch? I mean, I think to, to start with, um, you know, you want, you want people that break, that break boundaries, right? That, that pull down barriers. Um, I mean, I'm very keen to see, for example, I think for Kofi Annan, um, he, he was UN SecGen at a time where um, people of color were not seen to be taking the biggest roles in the world. Now, Barack Obama has obviously gone 
to do similar work in the United States. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, it's the same thing for even women. You know, you want people to break the glass ceiling. You want to have a female president, you want to have a female governor. You know, you want to show people that these things can get done. And I think Kofi Annan was one of those people who, just by working through that process and raising his hand, you know, showed that, look, this guy from Ghana can run what was pretty much the largest global um, institution in the world. Mm -hmm. And same with you. I mean, at under 40, you're running LSCTF. Um, and for that, I mean, you've gotten a lot of recognition for your work in such a short period of time. Uh, what do these, you know, accolades, nods, recognition, what, what does it truly mean to you? And I think it's, it's actually a reminder to do more work, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's a reminder it's early days, right? So, you know, the thing about, I mean, you're, you're only one, I always say, you know, today you're cock of the walk, tomorrow you're feather duster. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's very easy if you let these things get to you, you know? I mean, like, the truth is, in, when you are in what is perceived as a position of authority, people will, they will pass accolades on, whether mm -hmm. real, whether fake, whether it's at face. You, you, don't, you don't really, you can't really, you can't really base your performance on accolades. Even the accolades make us know that, look, it's a long, it's a long slog. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So it's a reminder that, look, there's a lot more to be done. All right, I know you're married. Uh, I know you've got children. Um, and there's this ongoing talk and debate about work-life balance. Is it achievable? Is it a myth? On what side are you on? <laughs> I mean, I think the funniest part is, I mean, if you ask me, I might say A, and then my wife, if you ask my wife, she might not agree, but, but I think, it's, I think it's, it's difficult to achieve, mm. but it's definitely possible. My personal experience is that both parents full-time work, but still make time for, for their families and their friends. All right. So I see you're a Manchester United fan. Proud one. Yeah, very proud one. And you're also a fan of Cohiba Cigars from Cuba. How do you typically unwind? <laughs> Before I took this job, I used to play golf once or twice a week. Okay. Um, sadly, since I switched from the private sector to the public service, I've not had time to play golf. Mm -hmm. So sorry for those of you who think that, you know, working for government <laughs> is a lot easier than working for, for private corporations, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's, not, it's not so, it's not even anything close, right? Because my time is no longer mine, right? My time now belongs to the state. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no more golf, sadly. Uh, my handicap has suffered significantly. Mm -hmm. But I, I try to play football. Mm -hmm. um, so I play football at least once a week when I, when I can on Sundays, sometimes twice a week, Wednesday nights, late nights, Wednesdays, Sundays, you know. Amazing. Now let's come back to your career and then um, in relation to challenges. So. What are those key challenges that you've had to overcome in your career to make the strides you've made so far? I mean, I think challenges, to be honest, I can't remember these challenges, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I try not to see these challenges, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I want this, I get it done, you know? Mm -hmm. If I don't get it done, what's the, next, what's the next best alternative? So I'll be very bad at curating challenges, you know? Mm -hmm. Fears I have, mm -hmm. you know, challenges I, I, I don't worry about too much. Um, I think. But if you ask me, you know, I think it's, it's probably building emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, I used to be very, you know, very, I, I'll tell you, I used to be a, a bit more, I used to be brash. Mm -hmm. um, that, thankfully, I hope I've curved. Beautiful. I know you're a well-traveled man, but how has travel and interacting with diverse cultures helped to shape your person? I think it's, it's, it's critical, you know. Um, I always say to people that, look, You've got to recognize, you know, we're all, we all held hostage by our experiences, you know, by our interactions, etc. So I guess it's allowed me to have a, an open mind, right? So it gives me an, what, what, what just interacting with different types of people does is that it allows you to see different perspectives. And that's not even just globally, even within Nigeria, mm. right? Just understanding that you live in Lagos, Yoruba culture isn't the view of the world, you mm -hmm. know? So, do, serving in Borno State, for example, exposed me to, to a different view of, of Nigeria, you know. Um, so you've got to be, you've got to be cross-cultural, you know, you've got to have friends from different parts of the world. And not just say you want to have friends because you want to say, oh, I have Igbo friends, I have Hausa friends. No, understand the culture, you know, mm. understand why they do certain things in a certain way. All right, so how would you describe your leadership style? And I think you should have asked the guys, eh? So, <laughs> I mean, if you had asked the team. Look, I, 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 I like to work in a fun environment, right? So I'd say, you know, it's very fluid. Um, there's focus on results. So I'm less worried about how much time you spend sitting down here. I'm more interested in what you achieve and how you're able to achieve it. So I'm more, 
are more result result driven. In some in some cases, um, when I panic a bit, I, I tend to micromanage. Mm. Um, but generally, I like to let people do their thing. Amazing. So tell me about your failures and failings as a leader. You know, failures. I think for me, it will be it will be primarily just not having people engage to the vision. Mm. Um, I think I'd have failed if the people we, um, who work with me are not engaged to the vision of the institution I lead. So what values would you say are important to you and this firm? Uh, there, there's an alignment, mm -hmm. um, and that's also one thing I always say, you know, institutional and personal alignment of values is important. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if your values don't align with the values of the institution, then you're in the wrong place, mm -hmm. right? So for me, you know, it's, it's, it's integrity, and I, I always say integrity is not the same thing as honesty, right? So integrity is just saying, you know, you do what you say, you know, um, you know, we can bank on you, you know. This report is going to be ready on Friday, it's ready on Friday. You know, it's not ready on Monday, it's not ready on Tuesday, it's ready on Friday. You know, it's been inclusive. You know, it's understanding that Lagos is a melting pot. You know, um, there are Ethic, Igbo, Hausa, Yoruba, etc. Everyone comes here seeking opportunities. It's ensuring that we are there to provide opportunities for everyone, regardless of how they worship, what language they speak, where they are originally from, etc. Um, you know, it's being results oriented. You know, it's understanding that look, what is the outcome we want to achieve here? You know, it's not doing for the sake of doing. It's doing because there's a result. Okay. You know, so I, I think those are the those are some of the the values. Okay, amazing. So, what would you say is the biggest letdown you've had in your career so far? I was very, I was very opportune to, to be, to be exposed to the human, the human effect of job loss from very early. So when, when people to till today, if you come to talk about talk about a job loss situation with me, mm. um, I, I try to make sure that we we check and we check this decision and ensure that we are not making a mistake. You know, because mm. the, the 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 impact of that mistake on somebody's kids, on somebody's wife, on the person, or someone's husband, is usually significant. We know Akin loves his Cohiba cigars, and unfortunately, he can't play golf as much as he used to. But what are his lifestyle choices? What other CEOs does he look up to? I must find out this and more. All right, I've got a few quick fire questions for you. What do you love to eat? Plantain. How would you describe your fashion style? Oh, man, poor. What brands uh, do you love to wear? House of Form and Function. My suits are all House of Form and Function. So that's my friend Femi George, um, who makes all my suits. Okay. So what other CEOs do you currently look up to? Three guys I find amazing. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Jack Ma. A Nigerian CEO I find amazing, Binka Sonny, who was my CEO at Stambika IBTC. All right. So what's your favorite book of all time? Uh, arguably. Christopher Hitchens is also my favorite author of all time. Amazing. So what book are you reading right now? I'm reading Who Gets What and Why, um, Alvin Roth. Um, I'm reading The Mixer. Uh, that's a book on football uh, by Michael Cox. Um, and I'm reading Hillary Clinton's uh, book on the elections. Oh. So I, I juggle, I usually read like three, four books at the same time. Amazing. So lastly, I'd like to know, I mean, what makes you happy? I mean, that's the easiest question you've asked me today. My wife and kids. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for coming on Under 40 CEOs. Thank you very much. Also. All right. Hi, my name is Akitunde Oyebode, and you too can be an Under 40 CEO.